Hello! In today's video, I want to talk about GitHub environment. Environments are specific contexts in your workflows to target a specific deployment context, like a development, a staging, or a production environment where you want to push and deploy some applications. Let's look in detail how it works. You may have seen on your page of the repository different environment, like staging, production, and development. In my case, the three of them are active. This is defined and configured in the settings environment part of your repository. In my case, I have three environments, dev, stage, and production. And let's look at the production one, because each of them have a secret and different protection rules. So if we look into the production, you can see at the top that I have defined a specific protection rule asking for reviewer when something is happening to this environment. This means that somebody from Tigral Octodemo DevOps team has to approve or reject the workflow to deploy it in production. In addition to that, in this specific environment, only the code that is part of the main branch will be able to use this uh, environment. So you can also define secrets that will be specific to the production environment, allowing you to separate clearly the different secrets based on the different environments. So you don't want the same people to deploy in development, for example, or in productions. This is a very good way to secure the deployment in productions and define a specific workflow in terms of life cycle of your applications from staging, development staging, and production. So let's now see an application that will be using this different environment. In my case, I have a workflow that deploy an image into a Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, a first job is just an initialization. And I have a job that is called deploy to development. Deploy to development is used when the branch is not main line 31. And then from 33 to 35, it select and use a specific environment. The development environment will be used in this case, based on the rules that you have defined, but also will update the status on some information on the page of uh, GitHub repository homepage, but also the history and the event of the environment. And you can see on the URL on line 35, it will be populated by one of the steps of the job. In my case, I am calling Kubernetes to say, give me the service URL and use that as a development target URL, or the um, environment target URL, sorry. So the same way I have defined a job for development environment, I have a job for staging and a job for production, but this time using the main branch. And each time the rule that has been defined at the environment level will be used. About the application itself, no code here is just the configuration of Kubernetes in this repository, where I have a simple service that uses one um, container image hosted on GitHub Container Registry, and this is a version 1.0 of the calculator service. So let's see the application running in the different environment before doing any modification. So when you go inside, inside an environment, you can view the deployment you will view the exact deployment and the value of the application running. And you can switch between the different environments and look at it. We can see that staging and productions are on V1. And I'm not testing development, but it's the same. Let's now update the applications to switch the image from 1.0 to 2.0. Like that, we will have a full workflow. So creating a branch, a pull request that will launch a new workflow and the new branch. So let's create the pull request. And now the workflow is running. And if we look in detail into the workflow, you will see that only the Kubernetes development environment is targeted. Production or staging are ignored in this specific instance because we are not on the main branch. 
So we have to wait a few seconds, depending on how fast is, it's going on your cluster, and we get a URL directly in the workflow pointing to the development environment with a new version of the application. Let's click, refresh, and you can see now we are on version 2.0 of the operation service. We can do that also from the home page where you have the list of the environment. So if we look into development now, you will see in the history that it, we have a new deployment that happened. And if we look at the deployment itself, it's 2.0. So let's now uh, merge this pull request. So you are done, you have, stage, you have tested in development, we are ready to merge into staging and production. So I'm switching to another user that needs to do the review of the pull request, looking at the code, testing in the development environment, happy with it, approve the pull request. Approving the pull request with close the pull request, but also merge the code into main and run a new version of the workflow inside or a new instance of the workflow on the main branch. So let's look into uh, the workflow now. And this time it will be executed on main branch and target production on staging. So you see production staging. As you can see at the top of the workflow in this yellow box, the user is currently waiting for somebody to review the deploy to productions. It's because of the rules that I have set in the production environment. So the, the deployment to production has to have a manual step, a validation, but in staging, it's automatic. So the staging will happen to take the version 2.0 of the code of the image, deploy it, allowing people to review from a business point of view, waiting for the production. So let's go now into, into the home page and you can see the different status of the different environment. Development is active, nothing has been modified. But staging, staging is in progress and production is waiting. In progress is just happening as we speak. Waiting, it's waiting for a manual step or waiting for a timer or something. So let's go, to, let's go back to uh, the workflow look if uh, the staging deployment has been finished. So let's see. So staging is done. We click on the URL and we should have exactly the same version of what we have in development because we use the same image. Refresh, done. So we have done the deployment in development, merge a pull request, deployment is done in staging, and now we have to manually approve, based on the policy rules that has been made, uh, defined in the environment, we have to approve uh, uh, the deployment into production to make the deployment itself. So looks good to me, I have tested in staging so I can approve the deployment. So now the workflow will continue, but this time with a job that is targeting production. And after a few seconds, you have development is done, deployment is done in production on every environment now is on version 2.0. Development, staging, and production are aligned. And once again, what we have defined is in productions, we define a specific reviewer, a specific branch, and specific secrets allowing you to control exactly what happened when you want to push in production. In this case, I want a manual step to do it. So let's go back to all the environments and see what the status here. When you click on environment, you can see what has been deployed in all the environment, production, staging, and development, productions 2.0, staging 2.0, and deploy, development 2.0. Also at the bottom of this page, you have many information about all the history of what happened to each of the environment, when the deployment was done, from which branch, from almost which commit and so on. So to summarize, when you work with GitHub environments, you have a way to describe deployment targets. 
for example, production, staging, and development, and each of them will have specific protection rules and secrets. For example, in development, I don't want to put any rules, so everybody will be able to push. Their commit will define uh, the workflow that is executed from a commit in development will have no restrictions to push modification and deploy applications. But each environment will use its own secrets. Like that, you can be sure that a job that will only target one specific environment, one specific secret, no risk of uh, targeting the bad environment with the bad secrets. If you are in development, no risk to target a staging or the production one. With protection rules, like putting in place reviewers or timers, but also targeting or selecting which branch can target this environment, will also give you a lot of control about what's happened with environment. And as you have seen, environment are used inside workflows uh, to give you information about what's happening, when it's happening, and updating the status in different places inside the workflow itself, on the home page, and updating the history of all the de deployment environment, giving you a lot of information. Thanks for watching. Feel free to ask me any questions or comments about this specific topic or any topic you would like to talk about.